Nelson want, had come from a divorced, his parents were divorced and it was a very ugly divorce and his childhood was pretty rough. Um, he knew, he grew up saying that he'd known poverty and he was one of those types that would always worry about every nickel, not that he was cheap or stingy, but he was always worried he, tomorrow he'd have no money he'd, he'd and he'll be, broke. he'll be broke. So he wanted, when he married, he wanted to marry someone who was not on the Hollywood stage, that was not going to be competing and the, there wouldn't be two divas in the family and he could be the breadwinner and, you know, she'd have kids and they'd raise their kids. That's what he wanted. And so when he proposed marriage to Jeanette, which he did during the filming of their most famous film, Rosemary, the one mm -hmm. where he plays the Mountie, right. and they were at, up at Lake Tahoe and he proposed to her and the problem was he wanted her to give up her career, retire early. And she said, no, I've worked just as hard as you have. Why should I give it all up? And so he was constantly battling playing, as he said, second fiddle to her career. Mm -hmm. And now, wasn't he married? He was not married at the time. Oh, he wasn't? No, he didn't marry. Now, she marry. was. Wasn't she was she? not married at the time. When did she get married? Time. Did Jean Raymond? Was she it? married Jean Raymond in 1937, and that was after they had already gone through at least two years of a tumultuous romance. Okay, okay. And what resulted in her marrying Jean mm -hmm. Raymond was mm -hmm. that when they were up at Tahoe, um, Jeanette got pregnant. And back then you had it in your studio contract that you couldn't marry, divorce, or have children without studio permission. Mm -hmm. So when she called Louis B. Mayer and said, hey, we're going to run off to Reno together and get married, he said, no way. You know, you know you're just becoming the major film star you know you're you know he had always promised her he'd make her as big a star as Norma Shearer who was the queen right. of the lot right. and he said no way you're not going to throw it away for that baritone he didn't like Nelson in the first place oh. and uh, because Nelson wouldn't kowtow to him you know he didn't carry out his own career outside of Hollywood so they argued about that and Jeanette eventually miscarried. Now whether she would have had an abortion the way Mayer asked, I don't know. I can't answer that, but I know that she miscarried and Nelson thought she had had an abortion and he broke up with her. Uh. They went their separate ways and she ended up marrying Jean Raymond, who many people felt looked very similar. Yes, he did. He resembled Nelson. Yeah. Well, Jeanette later said, you know, he reminds me of Nelson without the rough edges. Uh -huh. So, you know, at that time, Nelson eventually married himself on the, on the rebound after Jeanette married. But their marriages were not what the public thought. Mm -hmm. They ended up back together, but... Still married to their yeah. respective mates. But they... Mayor, Louis B. Mayer would not let them get divorces, at least while they were at MGM. And they stayed at MGM till 1942. Now after that, his wife, Nelson's wife, was a bit unstable, you might say. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, she threatened to disfigure Jeanette. She threatened oh. to go to, you know, the press and, and tell all the stories about the pregnancies, because Jeanette had more than one with uh -huh. Nelson. Mm -hmm. And there were all sorts of things that she threatened to make a huge scandal and Nelson wouldn't never have it. So he he didn't divorce her or he couldn't he wasn't willing to pay the money she wanted. And so are, are you it saying was a that the, uh, tough life. Nelson Eddie was a kind of Romeo guy? I mean he was a Believe sexy Believe it or not, he was. He was quiet and unassuming. Yes, and because I would, can remember how he looked till today and how he acted. I mean, so reserved. So well, reserved. I mean, not saying that you couldn't also be, um, you know, have a wild life, but uh, he didn't telegraph any of it. He wasn't wild, oh. but he did have he did have some women that he and Jeanette had a relationship that went that was on the out. Sometimes they were together part of the time. It was not smooth going I'm, uh, at all. And in the periods when he was broken up with Jeanette. There were some other women that he depended on. I mean, I wouldn't say a Gail ship Sherwood? in every port. Gail Sherwood. <laughs> what do you think? Well, I know. I happen to know. You did, <laughs> yes. right? Oh, yeah. I'm glad to know that she was uh, absolutely gorgeous <laughs> and and, not, and beautiful in the same way Jeanette was. I, I mean, it was years ago, but I remember it. You know, and uh, she was gorgeous, uh, Gail yeah. Sherwood. And I try to think back, sitting around having cocktails there and. And and you know, uh, with them and things like that, I, I can't say I saw a thing going on between the two of them. You know. Well, 
I don't know why you couldn't, because she was something else. You know, a young guy like me, I was aware of her. Well, they, they, they did, and I've interviewed several of the women that had relationships with Nelson, through, mm -hmm. you know, off and on throughout the years. He did stay in touch with all of them. He remained friends with them. And a lot of the information that I got about their personal life came from the conversations that he had with these women. Like he would show up and he'd say, oh, you know, I had this problem with, you know, my wife, and then I had this problem with Jeanette. Um, although I have to tell you a funny story from one of the women that he knew. Um, he, he, he met up with her and he looked very distressed and she said, what is it? Are you having problems with your wife? And he said very tersely, she's not my wife. She's the woman I'm married to. My goodness <laughs> gracious. So they had a kind wow. of a bittersweet story, yeah. and I was also very lucky in that I had access to hundreds of letters that had never been published anywhere. And the thing was that Nelson was close to his mother, and he lived with his mother until he, he got married. And after, when, when Nelson met Jeanette, Nelson, uh, Isabel Eddy, his mother, very much wanted him to marry Jeanette. And she was very angry when he... He, she felt he had messed things up and Jeanette ended up with somebody else. So Jeanette and Isabel remained friends through, through, throughout. And Isabel had one of her best friends lived in Philadelphia and then later moved down south to Louisiana. Well, in those days, you didn't pick up the phone and call and say, oh, my God, Jeanette had another miscarriage and Nelson's off you know, gallivanting mm -hmm. around and, you know, you didn't do that because the phone operators would, would well, listen, listen in, in. That's especially right. if you were yeah. famous, they did. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you, some of my information I got from women who really? were, who well, as young girls were in? phone operators who used to listen to Nelson and his wife fighting on the phone. Um, anyway, so Isabel Eddy would write to her friend, sometimes two, three times a week. Mm. And she'd say, oh, you know, I read what Nelson wrote in his diary. He would have killed her. And she would copy things out of his diary and send it off to her friend. Well, the friend was supposed to destroy the, all those letters. Did. Never did. Yeah. And somebody held on to them for, for years. And then about when I was writing this book, Sweethearts, and word got out that I was going to do a final tell-all, you know, I was going to you know, yeah. let it all hang out and yeah. tell the real story. Um, she called me and said, look, I have these letters. You need to come see them. And I said, well, where are you? And she said, Detroit. Well, I was living in New York at that time. And I said, well, what's in these letters? She says, all I can tell you is it's, it's absolute proof of what you're writing, but I will not tell you more on the phone. I said, okay, I'm supposed to drop everything and get on a plane and come see you just to look at these letters. How long will I need? She said, at least three days. So I did that. I told my husband, look, if I don't show up, call the police. <laughs> you know, if you don't hear from me again. I didn't know what it was. But I flew out there, and it was, it was a treasure trove. And the amazing thing was that here there were letters from, say, the middle of the 1940s, which was a murky period. There wasn't a lot known because their film careers were pretty much over, and they had sort of dropped out of the Hollywood scene. And here are all these love letters that Nelson's just writing these intimate things, you know, very graphic. Well, Love, you wouldn't even think. Can you, you give me an idea without closing <laughs> this show down? Just he's, a little how graphic. He's just very graphic. He's describing they had this sort of quote unquote honeymoon. They used to return every year to Lake Tahoe where they filmed Rosemary. Okay. And they would stay at the cabin at Chambers Lodge that they had originally stayed at because that was a special time for them. That's when he proposed to her and she promised to marry him before everything happened. So every year or when times were tough, they would go there and the owners of Chambers Lodge would not tip off the press and would always give them the same cabin and they had a little hideaway. Well, there was an, an entry from October of 1943, and uh, excuse me, Nelson wrote about what they had done the night before, and it was how, you know, how he didn't, you know, he wanted to, you know, sweep her up on his feet, and he took her in the bedroom and everything that he did, and it's pretty graphic. I mean, it's not pornographic, but it's graphic, and some people were stunned when they learned that Nelson Eddy, who looked like such a quiet, yeah. reserved man, right had this whole other nature to him that you would not have known about. But it's, it's absolutely Did he swing true. from the chandeliers, do you know? <laughs> Gene Raymond did. Gene Raymond did. Really? Okay, the rumor uh, can, I was... I want to call in Daryl Winston. <laughs> yeah. Sit here, my man. Uh, pro me, producer and...